What's going on, YouTube? BMW was one of the first luxury automakers to get into the crossover game with the X5 in 1999, but they are one of the last to get into the three-row game. But here we are some 20 years later, spending the day with the largest BMW ever made, the all-new X7. This is a very big deal for BMW, which is why we drove nearly four hours to BMW of Cincinnati North to show it off to you guys. Of course, we do want to specially thank them for inviting us out to check out this fully loaded X7. And if you're the market for any new BMW, be sure to stop by their beautiful showroom or visit them via their website, which we provided a link to in the video description. So with that said, let's see if the X7 makes enough of a splash to make up for the lost time. So like always, starting off with the exterior design, the X7 has taken some familiar BMW characteristics, but has put a totally new spin on it. Of course, you couldn't have a BMW without the signature kidney grille. However, this is the largest interpretation we've seen to date. All models will come with this distinctive look, which has silver bars running through it, and then smaller chrome bars recessed inside it. As far as the rest of the front, the lower fascia does change to be more aggressive on the M Sport model, as opposed to this luxury X7. And then turning to the full LED headlights, they are also a pretty big departure from the more traditional X3 and X5, since they have a long and narrow design that touches the grille. Now they are also auto dimming and adaptive as standard equipment. And if you get the 50i model, you can option on BMW's laser light system. Additionally, you do have discrete LED fog lights mounted at the bottom. Now even though BMWs are known for their on-road performance, the X7 does have some off-road cred thanks to the great ground clearance. What you're looking at is the standard height setting for the air suspension of 8.7 inches, but it can be raised or lowered by an additional 1.6 inches if needed. Heading around to the side, this is where it starts to register just how much bigger the X7 is than the X5. It's about 10 inches longer than its sibling, and it's also quite a bit larger than rivals like the Audi Q7 and Volvo XC90. You've also got very large side windows that make for a really airy feel inside the cabin. And then checking out the rear, the design once again is a departure from BMW norm. The chrome bar across the back, as well as the slender taillights, serve to make it look much wider than the X5. Of course, the taillights themselves are fully LED. And then down at the bottom, you have dual horizontal exhaust outlets. But overall, BMW has done a great job of making the X7 both bold and attractive. In this class, people want something that stands out from the crowd, and this does for all the right reasons. Now one of the things that stands out the most about this X7 are the wheels. These are actually the standard 21 inch alloys on the luxury model, but you do get the choice between this black finish or a more traditional silver finish. Additionally, there are three different 22-inch optional wheels on the luxury model. Then on the M Sport model, it has its own set of wheel designs, starting with the standard 21-inch bicolor alloys, and then two optional 22-inchers. Moving up to the mirrors, they always come fully loaded, with heating, auto dimming, power folding, and standard blind spot detection. And then as far as all your other safety systems, the X7 can be had with a ton of them. Every model will come standard with city collision mitigation, cross traffic alert, and speed sign recognition. But adding the driving assistance professional package gives you a lot more systems. It includes lane keeping assist with auto lane changing, evasive aid which can steer around hazards, adaptive cruise control, and extended traffic jam assist which can take over driving on highways when the speed is under 37 miles per hour. Finally, the last thing to look at on the outside is the 21.9 gallon fuel tank, which is good for 482 miles of range on this 40i model. 
and of course that is on premium fuel. But anyways, that's it for the bold exterior. So now let's check out that flagship cabin. So of course, as you would expect, every X7 does come standard with BMW's smart entry system. However, we've got the optional display key. This gives you a few extra features as opposed to the normal key. Um, you can basically activate it and you can swipe up here to unlock it. And it gives you the ability to see different things uh, that you could see through the application, uh, like your range. You can also remotely control the height of the air suspension. So it's really neat. Um, part of the premium package also includes the remote start system, so I can do that via this fob, or I can do it via the app. But anyways, getting inside the vehicle, all I've got to do is reach behind the door handle, and it does have a sensor. This vehicle does also have the uh, auto-closing doors if you fail to close them, and that's part of the premium package. Alrighty, so first looking at the cabin of the all new X7, as you can see, it's got a lot of the same design characteristics that come on the uh, recently redesigned X7, so it's definitely got that latest design language. Now of course, as you would expect from a flagship luxury vehicle, there is an absolute ton of different ways you can configure this cabin. So starting out with your base X7, that will come with black Sensatec leather, um, however, that's not in production yet. It won't begin to make that model until April. So as of right now, this is your standard leather, your real Vernasca leather, which is what we have. Uh, that comes in black, Kennebira beige, coffee, or this cognac color. Now you do have two more options beyond that. Uh, you can get the extended merino leather package as an option, and that gives you black, white ivory, coffee, or tartufo color schemes. And then there is one more available thing, which is your full merino leather. Uh, and that comes in that beautiful ivory and night blue combination that you've probably seen in the uh, press pictures. But anyways, that's for your leathers. Now you've got another uh, giant amount of selections for your wood trims. So you've got bronze metallic ash, fine line striped brown wood, anthracite brown poplar wood or fine line black wood. Those are your standard ones or you can add in individual ash wood or black piano trim as an option. But anyways, turning over here to your door trim, it is beautifully finished. So as you can see, you've got leather on every part that you would touch, uh, finished in the same color as the seats. And then across the top, you've got more leather as well. Uh, we do also have two-person memory seating that is standard equipment and you will notice uh, four fully automatic windows as well as power folding mirrors now coming down to the seat itself uh, the standard model comes with a 16-way power adjusting seat however we have the optional 20-way power adjusting seats that come in the luxury seating package so in addition to the extra adjustments, uh, it actually also has eight modes of massaging as well. And then of course, looking at the leather itself, it is absolutely beautiful. I uh, love the color and it's really high quality and has a lot of lovely color contrast stitching. But first checking out the cabin, I have to say it makes a powerful first impression. Definitely visually stunning, and once you start touching the materials, they are also of the highest tier. So across the entirety of your upper dash, you actually have full leather with color contrast stitching. And when you drop down to the middle, you got more of that wood trim and real aluminum. Those same materials do carry down here as well, so you have generous use of the real wood, real aluminum, as well as uh, a nice leather that goes through here where your knee would touch. So overall, 
really beautiful materials. Now, of course, as you would expect, you do have standard push button start. Uh, however, we've got the optional uh, glass finish for both the shifter and the push button. And when you press that, you'll go ahead and notice our 12.3 inch iDrive screen boot up. This is standard equipment and it does come with the latest version of iDrive. So checking out the gauges here, this is your 12.3 inch live cockpit professional. It is standard equipment and of course it is fully reconfigurable. Um, it, it also changes with the drive mode so you can just cycle through different things and as you can see the design uh, itself does change. Now you might be noticing that flickering uh, thing up there, that's just an effect of the camera. You can't actually see it but you know, in person, uh, but that's basically a little monitor to make sure you are you know, paying attention for the semi-autonomous driving features of the vehicle. And then in addition to those gauges, you also have a head-up display which comes in the premium package. And of course, other information would be there if you were driving, for instance. But anyways, coming back to the steering wheel, uh, you do have electric power assisted steering, and of course all models will come with a leather wrapped steering wheel. Um, on the luxury models, you're going to get this design, which basically has four spokes, and then you get a special three-spoke design if you go for the M Sport. But it is a lovely steering wheel. As you can see, you have leather even on the airbag cover, and all these buttons are real metal for both your uh, adaptive cruise control as well as your standard audio, phone, and voice controls. Uh, additionally, we do have heating, which comes in the cold weather package, and it doesn't just include the heating of the steering wheel, but also heated armrest. As far as other things to look at, uh, you've got standard rain sensing wipers on every X7, as well as standard aluminum paddle shifters. And the steering wheel is also power adjusting as standard equipment as well. Now moving on to interior storage, as you would expect from the biggest BMW, you do have a ton of it. Starting out with your center console here, just press this button, it does open up on both sides. As you can see, you have a very deep bin here uh, with a nice removable pad in case it gets dirty. Also within here, you do have a USB Type-C port. And then moving up from that, you can just press on this to release this cover and you'll find your two cup holders, which by the way, are both heated and cooled uh, with the premium package, as well as a standard wireless phone charger back here. So as you can see, we're actually charging our display key uh, right there on this pad, or of course you can just charge your phone. And there's a 12 volt outlet, as well as a USB port right there. One of the reasons why BMW has been able to give you so much storage is because they use an electronic shifter. So like I already mentioned, this one is special because this is made of glass, so it is really beautiful uh, something you definitely don't see in most cars and just kind of depending on which angle you view it you can see that X in there it kind of moves three-dimensionally really a slick feature but as far as the actual operation of the shifter this does work in your typical BMW way so you just grab the side here the unlock then you pull back for drive can bump over here to activate the manual mode and shift this way or of course using the standard paddle shifters Going into reverse, you just push it all the way up to the front. And as you can see, when we do that, our backup camera pops up. Now the standard model does come with a regular backup camera. However, we have the optional uh, parking assistance package, which gives us the 360 degree camera system. Really a uh, clear resolution, looks fantastic. Um, and also included within that package is your automatic parking and backup assist. And you can go into different things and customize this to however you like it, as well as switch to different views. And then for park, all you have to do is just press the little P. Now in this area, you'll find an absolute ton of controls. So I'll go through a few of them. Up here, you're going to find your traction control. This one activates your camera. 
your parking sensors and your turns off your auto start stop. And then back here is where you'll find your drive modes. So you do have three standard modes plus a adaptive mode, which is where you can just customize different parts of these three modes into your own favorite setting. Additionally, you do have a electronic parking brake as well as a brake hold feature and hill descent control. Now heading over here, this is our toggle for the air suspension. So right now we are in the middle setting, but of course you can just press it up to jump up to the second setting. Looks like there are five total uh, height settings that you can pick from. And then of course you do have your iDrive controller, which you're familiar with. Um, it does operate the same way as it does on other BMWs, but with this newest generation of iDrive, you can now also use the display as a touch screen if you don't want to use that. Alrighty, so now our next step up here will bring us to our audio controls. Um, so with the audio systems, there's three different ones you can get on the X7. The standard is a 10 speaker sound system. However, if you have the premium package like we do, you have a 360 watt 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. Additionally, there is another sound system, and that is a 1500 watt 20 speaker Bauer and Wilkins sound system. However, like I said, we've got the middle tier sound system, so let's go ahead and take a sample. Now, I do also want to mention that since we've got that premium package, we also have the optional gesture controls. So that does allow me to do things like make a circle to turn up the volume. So as you can tell, sound quality of this system is awesome. So unless you're just a real audiophile, you probably won't need that upgraded system. But anyways, that now brings us here to our climate controls. Now this vehicle comes standard with four zone automatic climate control. However, if you come with the cold weather package, then you have five zone automatic climate control, which I don't think I've ever seen any vehicle have before. But anyways, getting into it it's, uh, itself, you just have to press this button to turn it on. This uh, toggles up and down on your fan speed, and you will see your temperature display right up there once you engage it. So you can just adjust it up and down with these beautiful metal toggles. And then you do have physical controls for everything located right there. Additionally, you will notice uh, this button right here this is uh, your seat controls. This actually doubles for both the seat heating and ventilation. So when you press it, it brings you up to this menu. This allows you to just go through and select whether you want the heating or the ventilation. Now the heating is standard equipment. However, the ventilation comes with the uh, upgraded seats. But anyways, that now brings us up here to our brand new uh, iDrive system. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. Alrighty, so checking out the iDrive 7.0 system. This is all new. This is actually the vehicle it debuts in. Um, so it does have some new features. Now, chiefly among them, what I've already pointed out is that this is now a touch display. So I can come up here and I can simply touch things. I don't, no longer have to uh, live exclusively with the control knob, but I do still have that if you don't want to put fingerprints on it or whatnot. Now what you're looking at right now is your home screen and you can just click on these things to expand them. So as we go into our uh, standard navigation system, as you can see it is very detailed and pinch to zoom does work very nicely as well. Uh, you can simply change the settings over here as well or you can go to a split screen where you can keep the navigation over here and uh, the, all your other functions on this side. Last thing I'll click on is the applications. And as you see, there's nothing in here right now at this moment. Um, but I do want to say that this does come standard with Apple CarPlay. It's wireless Apple CarPlay. 
Um, so that's free for one year. You do have to pay a subscription after that. Uh, and, the, and there is no Android Auto at this point. But anyways, that basically sums up the main features of the iDrive 7 system. However, we will make a, a more detailed tech help video available for those of you who want to learn more. A link to that will be provided in the video description. So moving on up from that, you will always find this standard auto dimming frameless mirror. And you will also find a standard panoramic moonroof. So as you can see, this goes all the way back. And then even when it stops, there's a second one uh, just for your third row occupants. So everybody gets that beautiful view um, outside. Now, of course, as you would expect, the front portion does open up so you can still let in air and you also have a windscreen. And you might be noticing those little dots on the window. Uh, Mason's going to talk a little bit about what that is in the back seat. But anyways, the cabin of this X7 is absolutely stunning. Um, you know, you wouldn't expect no less for a flagship BMW, but everything in here is top quality, top rate materials, uh, fantastic technology, just an overall, uh, just really pairs that classic BMW experience, but with a lot more space. But anyways, now I'll go ahead and hand it off to Mason, who will finish up the rest of the cabin. Alrighty, so heading around to the rear seat of the all-new 2019 BMW X7, you're not only going to find one of the most opulent rear seats in any car, but you're also going to find one of the most spacious. So you will find 38 inches of rear leg room and 40 inches of rear headroom, which does place it on par with the BMW X5 and Audi Q7. Now it is worth noting that this model does have the bench seating, so we have seven passenger seating on this X7. However, you can get captain's chairs if you want that. Now turning over here to the door trim, of course this is a flagship vehicle, so it has amazing materials. So we do have some more of that beautiful leather down here, stitched all the way up here and it is even a stitch leather on the very upper portion and it is a really soft plastic all the way down here. In addition, we do have a nice metal door handle and you will also find several switches over here. So this one controls the rear, um, this moonroof over here and then this one controls the shade for the panoramic moonroof for the main cabin. Now in addition to that on the premium package you will also get rear window sunshades so if you have control over that over here, so just push it and it will go right up. Now down below that we do have this beautiful leather seat. It does even have some perforation here in the middle. And in addition to that, it is also power adjusting. So very few cars, regardless of price, have power adjustment here in the rear. And the X7 does have that even with this bench seat. So as you can see, there's tons of adjustments back here. Now getting into the X7 isn't too bad, it's not too tall of a vehicle, so you just get in. Now like I mentioned, the X7 is one of the most opulent rear seats in any vehicle, regardless of price. So BMW does give you standard rear vents across all trims of the X7. And down below that, you do also have your own climate controls on all trims. So the standard setup is actually four zones. So each rear passenger here in the back will be able to adjust their own climate. And as I'll talk about later, there is an optional five zone system. So you can just adjust the temperature through these beautiful metal knobs. And you will also notice that we have the optional heated rear seats. Now down below that, we do have a little storage compartment. And further below that, we have two charging USB ports and a 12 volt power outlet. Now here in the center of the bench seat model, you have a center armrest, it does fold down, you have some storage inside, it's nicely felt lined, and in the end, you have a nice cup holder set here. As you can see, they do pop out really nicely, 
and it is even leather wrapped here on the top portion and you do have metal accenting around it. Now up top all X7s will have this beautiful panoramic moonroof and it really is a huge panoramic moonroof. It goes all the way past the uh, rear headrest here. However, our model actually has something really cool up its sleeve. So we have the $750 Sky Lounge system, which basically adds some LED illumination around the panoramic moonroof, and it will light up really cool colors at night. And as you can see, there is a like little pattern in here, and that lights up to like kind of mimic a uh, starry uh, night and all that stuff. So this is kind of like a Rolls Royce. It's really cool uh, system, and this is the first BMW to have it. And finishing off the rest, you have an assist grip and coat hook, as well as some LED lighting. Now, like I mentioned, this is on par with most in the class, and there is plenty of space. This is the biggest BMW ever made, so we do have plenty of room behind Drew's position. So I have probably about eight to nine inches of rear leg room, and my feet can easily slide up under the seat. Now, it is also worth noting that we do have a charging USB port here as well, which is a really nice touch and sliding over. Even with the seat scooted all the way back, I still have probably six to eight inches of rear leg room, which is really nice for a vehicle like this. But overall, I cannot say enough good about the X7's rear seat. This is truly one of the most opulent rear seats I've ever been in, regardless of price point. Now to get into the third row of the X7, BMW has made it really easy, so all you have to do is grab this little switch and pull forward. Now it is a completely automated system, so you don't even have to lift a finger to do anything here, and it will fold down and out of the way. Now in the third row itself, you will find 33 inches of rear leg room and 37 inches of rear headroom, which is big for its class. Now to get back here, let's just go ahead and get in. Alrighty, and sliding into place, basically my first impression is really good, so I have about an inch or two of leg room, which is really quite impressive for a vehicle like this and my feet can easily slide up under the seat. And I also have plenty of thigh support, which is very uncommon in a car like this. Now BMW does also hook us up with quite a few features back here. So we do have a nice cup holder, some more beautiful wood trim, and they didn't even skip out on the materials since we do even have leather up on the top portion, down below that, and even on the armrest. Now in addition to that, we do also have some vents here, as well as your own uh, moonroof here so a lot of actually this is the first car that has the um, extra moonroof for the third row itself most of them they will give you the panoramic one and not give the uh, third row one so this actually has a third row moonroof itself and here you do also have climate controls so this is actually the first car we've ever been in that has five zone climate and that is included in the cold weather package so even the third row can adjust their temperatures independent from the front second and then all of those rows and all four people that can do their own thing. So you can adjust your temperature right here through the metal toggles. And we do even have a heated third row. So both rear seats back here are heated. But overall, I have to say this is the nicest third row I have ever been in. There is plenty of space back here. Like I said, thigh support is great. And BMW does not scamp out on a single feature from the uh, second row, and they put it all here back in the third row, so you do have even a moonroof, you have heated rear seats, uh, and even your own climate controls, which is an excellent touch. And I even failed to mention that you do also have a smart charging USB port back here. So this is truly one of the most luxurious third rows money can buy, if not the most luxurious third row. And to get the seat back into its place, all you have to do is find that same toggle and push down. Now 
Now the tailgate is power on every X7, and it is the two-part design, so all you have to do is locate this little lever under the lid, push it, and it will open the top portion. Now in addition, this bottom portion is also power, so all you have to do is locate this button, push it, and it will fall down. Alrighty, so checking out the trunk of the all-new X7, you will find a really impressive amount of space. So BMW didn't actually give us the measurement behind the third row, but I would estimate it to be about 15 to 20 cubic feet. And if you fold the third row and are behind the second row, that will give you 49 cubic feet. And if you fold all of the rows, that will give you 91 cubic feet, which is a lot larger than the Audi Q7 and BMW X5. Now, obviously, BMW does finish it really nicely back here. So we do have a little cargo cover. And down below the floor, we have plenty of more sport storage. We even have a space to put the extra cargo cover. And over here is where you'll find all of your really big, cool controls. So you do have controls over each seat. So like I said, these seats are power. So each rear seat can adjust independently from each other. But what I found to be the coolest feature, I've never seen this on any car, is you have these max buttons for cargo and for people. So basically, it's in max people mode right now. So all three rows are up. But let's say you wanted to fit something really big back here. You have to just push one button and it will fold all the seats in one. So just push it. And everything is completely automated. It's a one click touch system. And as you can see, when they do fold, you have a completely flat loading floor. And like I said, this is 91 cubic feet of space. There is tons of room back here. So if you can't fit it back here, then you might need to get a semi truck. And then checking out here on the right side, you do have a 12 volt power outlet, as well as some LED illumination. Now it is also worth noting here on the tailgate, you do have a second button. And this one will lower the rear air suspension. So you do, uh, have an air suspension that's standard on the X7 and it will lower to help getting in the cargo easier. Now to close it, just push it again. Now, of course, your passenger seat is that same beautiful design. You have this perforated leather, beautiful seat, and it is also 16-way power adjusting here on the passenger side, and you do have these beautiful uh, metal switches here, and you do even have four-way power lumbar support, as well as massaging with the seating package. Now, in addition, the seating package does also give you these two-person memory seats as well. Now in front of the passenger, of course, this is a flagship vehicle, so we have leather across the entire dashboard, some more beautiful wood trim, and down below that we do have a really good sized glove box, and it is nicely felt lined. Up top we have a sun visor, it does have an LED light and mirror, and you can also detach and extend it. But anyway guys, that covers all the crazy features of the rear seat, but now let's go ahead and check out the powertrain and take it on a quick test drive. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and talk a bit about the powertrains. Now uh, this model does come with two different um, engine selections. We have the basic setup, which is your 3 liter uh, twin power turbo inline 6 cylinder. Um, and that makes 335 horsepower and 330 pound-feet of torque, so very healthy numbers, uh, right in line with the competition. Now, the vast majority of people will choose this setup. Um, however, you can get a 50i model, and that comes with a 4.4 liter turbocharged V8. And that makes 456 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. So that's a very powerful, potent uh, powertrain for sure. Yes, definitely. As far as your transmission, you're looking at an 8-speed automatic transmission. 
and all uh, X7s do come standard with four-wheel drive. All that together is good for a 5.80 to 60 for this standard model or 5.2 seconds if you go for the V8 model. So once again, like I said, very impressive numbers. Even from the base model. Right. Under six seconds from something this big with a six cylinder is really Extremely impressive. impressive. And the last thing we'll talk about is your fuel economy. Um, so for your 40i, that's going to be 20 city, 25 highway, 22 combined. And if you go for your 50i, that's going to be 15 city, 21 highway, 17 combined. But anyways, now we'll go ahead and see how this BMW drives. First taking off in the BMW X7, uh, I have wow. to say, definitely is impressive how it, how it takes off. Um, I was not even pressing the throttle very much at all, as no. a matter of fact, and uh, it really has a lot of uh, grunt for sure, right off the line. You know, it's also really impressive how good this car sounds. Um, on a cold startup when we first got the car I was like wow that sounds amazing and it does also sound really good when you're driving along. Rounding that corner there, uh, you can immediately tell just how good the uh, handling is. Yeah. This is a huge vehicle, so I obviously don't expect it to <laughs> drive like an exotic sports car or anything, but boy, it feels uh, surprisingly buttoned down for something so big, you know. Usually when you get in a vehicle like this, it's a big lumbering, uh, you know, monstrosity, but uh, I have to say, this definitely has a, a much more manageable feel than I expected. Yeah, it honestly, riding along even in the passenger seat, you can tell the huge difference like between this and an Escalade, even though they are technically competitors. Uh, the Escalade is just a big vehicle, and uh, well, this car does not feel nearly as big, and it, like you said, it doesn't have the body roll or anything that that car does. So if you're really looking for a sportier three-row that's super large and luxurious, then it drives good. This definitely fulfills that mission. So auto stop stop just engaged and uh, it really st it starts wow. out very quickly. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that may have started up when that car moved. Um, I'd have to check on that. I know some Audis have that uh, feature that uh, you actually get the start up when the uh, vehicle in front of you moves versus when you take off your foot off the brake. That way you have even less of an yeah. amount of time to wait. And. Uh, it's so smooth, like honestly, you would not notice um, at all. Like, <laughs> you really wouldn't notice because this car is a, it's a, has a very smooth engine in addition to sounding good. Um, it's very smooth. As we get turned around here in the parking lot, seems like a good time to mention uh, maneuverability. Like I said, um, with the handling, it, it feels like a smaller vehicle than it is. 
um, you know, like you're not going to mistake it for something super small or anything, no doubt, but, um, you know, driving around through, through the parking lot, and it has very, uh, very that, tight turning radius. Exactly. You know, I didn't know if uh, there's a lot of traffic and you had to kind of squeeze in. Uh, this car did a really good job at getting in there, which I don't know if a lot of the rivals would have been able to make the turn. We do have uh, adaptive steering here, so uh, you know the tightness does adjust with your speed. So when you're at the low speed, it does. It's very very lightweight and easy, you know, to maneuver. And then, like I've already mentioned, once you get up to speed, it firms up nicely. So you've got a real confident, uh, confidence-inspired handling. And this is, of course, a BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Um, so they did try and make sure that this is plenty sporty enough, even though it is a large vehicle. I do also want to point out the 8-speed automatic transmission uh, fires off shifts very quickly, very smoothly. Um, it, it's just a very unobtrusive transmission. Definitely, that definitely serves its purpose well in a vehicle like this. At eight speeds, you would expect it to shift in and out a lot, but you really can't feel any of the shifts. And just cruising along here, I do want to take a moment. You know, this is a three-row luxury SUV. I know we've been talking a lot about the engine and the steering. Uh, since this is a BMW, but it is also a luxury three row. And their main mission is to be comfortable for everyone in your family. And I just want to mention how comfortable this car is to drive along the road. Uh, you know, this is not really a smooth road. And um, this car takes a bump like a dream. You can't really even feel it. And these seats are amazingly comfortable. I'm getting a back massage right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so this car- Heated it, armrest. Exactly, heated armrest. You really have every feature that you could ever, every creature of comfort you could ever desire, um, as well as the amazing ride quality. And for those of you concerned about the V8 version of this car, maybe you think that the inline six is not enough power. Uh, I definitely am going to tell you that it's going to be plenty for most. Like you said, this is going to be the volume um, seller, and this has plenty of power. If you want the V8, I will guarantee you you're going to get some really great sound. We heard one earlier, and it sounds fantastic. So if you want to go for that, then that's your case, but I don't think the power is really going to be the issue from this 40i. But all in all, really what more can you ask for? I think it really nails all the things that you look for. Like you said, first and foremost, it has to be a great luxury SUV. And it most certainly is. And then it also gives you a, a nice sprinkling of those BMW dynamics that you still expect no matter what the size of the vehicle is. So it, it's, it's a great all-encompassing package. Alrighty, so as you know by now, the X7 is BMW's flagship vehicle, uh, so it does have a pretty high starting price, as you would expect, for this much luxury and tech. So for the 40i, it starts at $73,900, and for the 50i, you're going to have quite a bit of a price increase to $92,600 as the starting price. And it does have included a little bit of extra standard equipment, not just the engine. But there is it does have, a yeah. little bit of extra equipment um, that comes with that. Yes. Now, of course, we do have quite a few options on top of that starting price. So we do have the Vernasca leather for $1,450, as well as the cold weather package for $1,200, the driver's assistance pro package for $1,700, the luxury seating package for $1,600, the parking assistance package for $700, as well as the premium package for $3,000. 
Now we do also have the integral active steering, which is an option on all of the models, and that's $1,150, as well as a $550 trailer hitch, which gives you the 7,500 pound tow rating. Now we do also have the display key, which is the thing with the nice uh, screen inside of it, that's $300 as well as glass controls for $650. And in addition to that, we do also have the optional leather dashboard, which is a really nice touch for $1,200, and the ambient air package for $350. And of course, like I mentioned in the rear areas, we do have the LED sky lounge roof, and that's a $750 option. Now the rest is destination charge of $995, and that brings in the total for this particular model as shown, at $89,495, which definitely is a lot of money, um, but this car is really one of the nicest interiors and nicest vehicles that I've been in, period. Um, so it's definitely a lot of money, but it is uh, well worth your investment. Well guys, we've been enjoyed watching the first in-depth look at the all-new and crazy opulent 2019 BMW X7. Please hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.